Welcome to this service at Faith and Victory Church. This is the place to come to receive your miracle from God. Now, let's join our service already in progress. You know, I guess everybody's wondered, how does a minister get his sermons? And I suppose people wondered that. Does he just sit down and think them up, or does it come to him? Tonight I'm going to teach on something God gave me coming this Wednesday, be three Wednesdays back. Uh, I was in a meeting, and before I went to the meeting, God said, take no notes. So I'm going empty-handed. All I've got is Got a bookcase full of Bibles. And uh, when I get there, I get a word from God. And I know the scripture. And I know about where it's at. So, before we get started, I, I go through to John, and I know it's about so-so right here. And I found it right away, you know. But I'd had that scripture in my heart for some time. Well, we went on and, and we read the scripture. And when I read it, you'll understand what I'm saying. Does man have the ability to forgive sin? And it doesn't matter how many people you talk to, they'll have different answers about it. You know, God's the only one can forgive sins. But I'm here to tell you tonight, that is not true. Every one of us has the ability to forgive sins. I'm going to show it to you in the Bible. So we had our discussion, and I, I, I told the people, I said, now I cannot teach on this because I don't have revelation on it. And right out of my mouth, I said, but God's going to give me revelation on it. And that came out of the realm of the Spirit. So we, we're going to have a meeting, our meeting, and then... After we got into our meeting, there was something else that somebody wanted to know, and we talked about that, and, and it was a really good meeting. To me, it was an extraordinary meeting. Anytime the Holy Ghost is involved, <laughs> it's going to be good, and you can bank on it. So I expect tonight to be good. <laughs> But anyway, I got in my car after the meeting and I didn't get out of the parking lot. And I'm not in a hurry to get out of the parking lot, but I didn't get out of the parking lot and I knew the answers to the scriptures that we, we went over. Do you remember Paul said, uh, I never got it from man, neither did man teach me. God's still the teacher. <laughs> God can teach you things you don't understand about the Word of God. There's been time and time again over the years I didn't understand something. I, back when I was really young in, in God or in the Pentecostal movement, I learned to ask God questions about His Word. And I'm telling you, every time I did, I would get the answer some, somewhere that week. Either the pastor would teach on it, or I would read and, or hear a tape and get the answer. God has the answer for you. See, it may be that 
the church is not growing like it really ought to because they're not asking God. You have not because you ask not. See, you who have children, mommy, 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 and they're always asking. And a lot of times they'll ask you questions. Some questions you can't even answer. I mean, you don't go there. They're too young. You know. You know that. But you do the best you can when you get one of those questions. Well, God said for us to be like little children. Is that what he said? Jesus took that little child on his knee and he said the kingdom of God is like this little child. Well, what was he talking about? Go to the Father God and ask him. You have not because you ask not. If you want revelation out of the word of God, go ask God. God has, he has a revelation. I absolutely can guarantee you he has a revelation on anything you can ask him. And it doesn't mean he's going to tell you like he told me. It may be a pastor. It may be a preacher. or It can come so many ways. So you can't, you just cannot tie the hands of God. And you can't make him small in your life either. If you don't expect anything from God, you get nothing. <laughs> Duh. <laughs> God is awesome in His ways. See, we've got to get accustomed to that. Every time I've been in this church to, to teach, and I'm a teacher, I'm not a preacher preacher, I'm a teacher, there's one thing I'd like to convey every time. How awesome God is. And see, we'll not know how awesome He is here on this earth. But you can, you can get into your, your spirit man more and more about awesomeness of God. And, I, and I, I say this all the time. I live, move, and have my being in the midst of awesome. See, I've told you guys this before. But the reason I do it, when I ask God a question, I get the answer. Because I'm expecting an awesome God. Let's say you're a little child growing up and, and you want a bicycle. And you got your heart on this, this one bicycle. It, it's a bicycle of all bicycles as far as you're concerned. <laughs> you say, Daddy, I want a bicycle. Okay, buddy, I'll get it for you. Christmas morning you run down the stairs and get under the Christmas tree and there's a bicycle but that's not the bicycle you want. It doesn't even come close to the one you wanted. Well you didn't tell daddy what kind of bicycle you wanted. See? It wasn't the right color either was it? <laughs> there's a whole lot to say about when you talk to God and ask Him for things, be specific. General doesn't get it with God. You can't be just general with God. You need to be specific. I want a little red dump truck. I want a Chevrolet. And I want it to dump. As far as I'm concerned, I got it. You say, wow, in the world would you want a dump truck? I just want a dump truck. <laughs> and God's not short on making sure you have what you want and need. But anyway, I want to read the scripture that uh, I've been talking to you about. It's in uh, John the twenty. 20th chapter John the 20th chapter <laughs> and the 
23rd verse. Whosoever sins ye remit, they are remitted unto them. And whosoever sins ye retain, they are retained. Now when I went into that meeting, I had no idea exactly what that meant. The eunuch told, uh, who was Stephen? How will I know unless a man teach me? Well, see, we've all got Jesus Christ to teach us. <laughs> You've got a man that can teach you the Word of God himself. Acts 7. Acts 7. Praise be unto God. <laughs> Acts 7 and 55. But he be, he, now we're talking about uh, the martyr of Stephen. And he, being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfastly unto heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God. And he said, Behold, I see heavens open and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. Then they cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears and read upon him with one accord and cast him out of the city and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their clothes at a young man's feet, whose name was Saul. And they stoned Stephen, calling upon God and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And he kneeled down and cried with a loud voice, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. Lay not this sin to their charge. Here was a man being killed by a crowd of people. And it tells you they were all together in this too. They were in one accord. Isn't that weird how, how a bunch of people can get in one accord in evil? He, Stephen, remitted their sins. And I'm going to show you later on why he did that. There's a reason for him to do that. And there's other times when, when people did the same thing. Uh, Go to Matthew 18. Matthew 18. Glory to God. And praise His name. Eighteen twenty one, eighteen twenty one, eighteen twenty one. Then came Peter unto him and said, Peter came to Jesus. Now, Peter thought this was a big deal, you know, that 
Lord, how oft should I, my brother, sin against me, and I forgive him till seven times? See, Peter didn't say two times, three times. He said seven times. That's going to be that's that's a lot of forgiving right there. Verse twenty-two. Jesus saith unto him, I say unto thee, until seven times, but until seventy times seven. Jesus is teaching God kind of love. <laughs> Won't you think about that now? And another thing. The covenant we have is in Jesus Christ. We all know that. And the reason God made a covenant with Jesus, he, this was a covenant that, that was everlasting. Nobody could break it. Jesus is not going to ever break that covenant with God the Father. So we enter into the covenant in Jesus Christ. We all know that. We could mess it up, but Jesus is not going to mess it up. And that's why God cut that covenant with Jesus. But I want you to think about this. That was an agape covenant. Not only was that an agape covenant, but every covenant God ever cut with his people was an agape covenant. Every covenant God made with the people was out of his love for his people. And it had to be agape love because God is love. Agape love, God's kind of love, is not trying to find fault with you or anybody. You can refuse to find fault with your mate. Ooh. Mm -mm. That was a big old hammer, wasn't it? But you can refuse to find fault with your children. I've told this before, and I'm going to tell it again because it's, it, it's worthy of mention. My daughter came, my wife and I were together, and, and she was talking about our granddaughter, you know, and, and I just sat there and smiled at her, and she looked at me, and she said, you don't understand, do you? She was all concerned about some actions that was going on. You understand what I'm saying? Uh, young lady at this time. And I told her, I said, I'm not looking for fault in her. And I never will. Does she do everything to suit me? I find no fault in her. <laughs> I'm not looking for fault. Why did I say that? God, if I'm, if I'm able to do that, look how much more God himself is not trying to find fault in you. When the pastor came in this morning, he, he came over and asked me if I would teach tonight. And I said, yes. And he's using some of the scripture that I had for this. <laughs> By the way, the next Wednesday that I went 
for this meeting, I got to tell the people and teach them what God had shown me. God wants to show you things, I promise you. If it's about Him, think about this now. If you want to know more about, okay, let's say I want to know more about this lady right here. Then I'm going to spend time and I'm going to talk to her and find out what I want to find out. You know, you spend time. <clears throat> And that's just the way it is. You're going to spend time with God. Anyway, the pastor is talking about love this morning, and, and I think it's part of what's going to be going on with the love meeting at the end of the month. Um, two or three sessions back before tonight, the pastor had asked me, earlier if I would preach that Sunday night and I told him yes and I'm surprised at how many of my scriptures he was using up <laughs> See? but it's the same Holy Ghost you understand what I'm saying but I went a different way with the same scriptures making a different point in a, in a, in a different direction and you're not going to retain but Less than ten percent. As a rule, you know what I'm saying. So that means you need to hear it ten times to get a hundred percent of it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. And I, I, I love to teach. I absolutely love it. Um, let's go to Luke twenty-three. Luke. Luke 23. Okay, praise God. And 34. And 34. Let's do 33 first. Verse 33. Um, chapter 23, verse 33. And when they were come to the place which is called Calvary, there they crucified him and the malefactors, one on the right hand and the other on the left. Then said Jesus... Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Here again, a man's being murdered, and he remitted their sins. You have a choice, and it could be quite often that you have this choice to remit somebody's sin that come against you, treat you badly, say ugly things about you. You have that choice. And I'm going to tell you the reason for it now. And show it to you in the Bible. Jesus never let those, and Stephen, never let those sins stay upon those people. And God had a wide open door to have a Holy Ghost move in all these people's lives. Stephen did not shut the door to God to be able to minister to these people. 
Neither did Jesus. Let's go to Acts chapter 3. I, there's something about Acts chapter 3. I, I really like that chapter. That's an awesome chapter. Acts. Well, I got kind of ahead of myself. I got excited. Now, there's one thing about teaching. You can get ahead of yourself when you get excited. Okay, Acts. We're going to start about 11. Acts 3, 11. Now this is about uh, Peter and John when went, they went through the gate beautiful. And Peter had good news for this lame man who had been lame from his mother's womb. And we're going to start at 11. And it's a lame man which was healed, held Peter and John. All the people come together unto them in the porch that is called Solomon's greatly wondering. And when Peter saw it, he answered unto the people, You men of Israel, why marvel you at this? Why look you so earnestly on us, though by our own power or holiness we had made this man to walk. The God of Abraham and of Isaac and of Jacob, the God of our fathers, hath glorified his son Jesus, whom you delivered up and denied him in the presence of Pilate when he was determined to let him go. But you denied the Holy One and the just and desired the murder to be granted unto you and killed the Prince of Life whom God has raised from the dead, whereof we are witnesses. And his name through faith in his name hath made this man strong, whom you see and know. Yet the faith which is by him hath given him this perfect presence in the... has given him perfect soundness in the presence of you all. And now, brethren, I want that, that thou did this ignorantly as did your rulers. See, now Peter, he got a hold of what Jesus was saying. Now Peter's teaching it. These things which God before hath showed by his mouth of all the prophets that Christ should suffer. He hath so fulfilled. Repent ye therefore that your sins be blotted out when the time of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. Okay, let's go over to 4.4 4 and see what happens. How be it? How be it? Got my tongue tangled up. How be it? Many of them which heard the word believed, and the number of men was about 5,000. See, Jesus left the door wide open for God to have a Holy Ghost set up and get 5,000 men. See, Peter said, you're the ones that killed Jesus. It says it right there in the Word. And you did it in ignorance. And not only were you ignorant of what was going on, but your rulers were ignorant too. And in another place, you know, if you remember, it says they wouldn't have killed the, the princesses wouldn't have killed the, uh, Jesus if, had they known who he was. They'd done it out of ignorance. Another thing you pay attention to, 5,000 people got saved 
and then they go into the council and it names the very people who killed Jesus in that council because it tells before when they take him out of the Garden of Gethsemane they mention these same very names and if you'll pay attention all these were Sadducees you can prove it out by the scriptures they were Sadducees it tells you right here in this, this these scriptures they were Sadducees and I guess that's why they were sad you see <laughs> Let's go to Mark 22. Mark 22. Mark 22. And you all know this. I'm wanting to bring home uh, and nail down. I'm sorry, Mark 11. Mark eleven twenty two. See, I got ahead of myself again. And Jesus answered and saith unto them, Have faith in God, for verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, shall believe those things which he saith, shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Therefore I say unto you, What things soever you desire, when you pray, believe you receive them, and you shall have them. And when ye stand praying, forgive. If you have aught against any, that your Father which in heaven may forgive your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father which in heaven forgive your trespasses. According to the Word of God, you're commanded by the Lord Jesus Himself to forgive sin. You can remit sins. Why? So God can work in their lives. So that door to the Holy Ghost, to, to have a Holy Ghost set up in their life is wide open. And I'm going to tell you sometime, it's kind of hard to do these things. What about somebody killing you? And you ask God to forgive them. In the natural realm, that, that, that seems pretty hard, doesn't it? Besides that, you can just remember that guy just cut you off while ago and you were really mad about it. <laughs> But you just forgive him. And Paul had something to say about that too. You know, he was talking one time, he said, uh, Do you think I burn not? When these people come against me, you think I burn not? <laughs> He's burning on the inside. There has to be. training and it'll come out of the word of God to get us to a place that we're not so fast to judge you know if you really get down to the nitty gritty you don't know what's going on in that person's life you have no idea He may be up against something that he can't handle and may not be able to. But see, we've got a, we've got a God that is awesome who strengthens us. He knows how to make us strong. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. And out of his love for his people, he has given unto us mercies and graces and kindnesses. And that's just to mention a few. Touching the Almighty, he is excellent in doing these things too. His way is excellent. See, that's what we're doing. That's why we're here tonight. We're learning to train how to walk more perfectly like Jesus. Jesus is our example. And if you remember everything the Father ever said about the Lord Jesus Christ, you can make up your mind real quickly. He wasn't looking for fault in him. He said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And I think there's a great chance and time and time again Father God looked over to Jesus and said I'm well pleased with you. 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 Now, we've said don't, don't put other people down. Don't put yourself down either. Don't do it. Don't give God an evil report about yourself. God's not into evil reports, I promise you. Read the book and he'll tell you. <laughs> God wants a good report. You say, well, I missed it. That's okay. You're learning. Get on your face before God and ask God to forgive you and it's gone. It, he doesn't even remember it anymore. It's gone. It's covered over by the blood. Too many times we're, we're too hard on ourselves. I knew that. But when you miss it, just, just pick yourself back up and ask God for the strength that you need to overcome this thing. And he's more than able. Praise God. Well, guys, did you, did you learn anything? I enjoyed teaching and glad to oblige the pastor any time. And thank you guys for being so attentive. We trust that you were blessed by the Word of God and the flow of the Spirit of God in this service. If you would like to contact us, please write us via email at office at fbc.org or using our mailing address, P.O. Box 7752, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27417. If you would like to contribute to our ministry, please go to our website at www.fbc.org and click on the Giving Online button. Thank you, and may God richly bless you for your giving.